Right here is my BMW M340i, and over the past two years, I've spent over $15,000 modifying this thing like crazy. And in those two years, I've realized that there are some really great mods for this car, but also some really bad ones. So in this video, I'm going to give you the top five mods that you can get for any BMW M340i. And I'm also going to give you three bonus mods that are super slept on that anybody should have for their BMW M340i to set them apart from the rest. So with all the mods that are available for this car right here, let's go through all of my favorites and talk about the best ones that you can possibly buy for your BMW m 340 so I want to give you guys a disclaimer. A downpipe and a tune is not on this list. It would have been way too easy for me to just take up one and two as a downpipe and a tune. But I still think I have to speak about it before we go on to number one. A downpipe and a tune is by far the best two mods that you can buy for these cars because it's really going to give you the most out of these cars and make them drive way faster. So you can easily bring this car up from its stock 382 horsepower up to 450 wheel horsepower with just a catalyst downpipe and an ECU tune. Not to mention the catalyst downpipe also adds a ton of really great sound. And since these cars don't come with resonators on the exhaust system, especially something like a catalyst downpipe is going to make it sound so good. But if you don't want to get a catalyst downpipe, you don't have to. You can still go with a cata downpipe and it's going to add just as much horsepower, but it's just not going to sound the same as a catalyst downpipe would. But like I said, those two things aren't on the list because that would have been way too easy for me to do that. So let's start off with number one. And number one is a lip kit and spoiler. Now this is just a regular four-door sedan. A lot of people would maybe consider this car regular traffic, but I think putting something like a lip kit and a spoiler on the rear would easily make it look way better than it already is. And by lip kit, I mean three things. A front lip, side skirts, and a rear diffuser. Maybe I should say aero kit, but let me show you what they look like. So right here, we have my front lip. This one is gloss black. It's just regular plastic. And the reason I don't have a carbon fiber one is because these things break so easily. Now, since my car is lowered and it has a front lip, that means the front of the car is super low to the ground. So if I don't go over a bump or into a gas station with a little bit of an angle, sometimes you might end up cracking the front lip, but I still think that this car looks so good with the front lip. Now, there are three main options for this car for front lips, but you can really just look online and see which one you like. I have this one with like the lines in the middle. I just think that one looks the best on these cars. But as for the side skirts, these are just regular M performance side skirts. Also, yes, this vinyl right here is factory. A lot of people ask me about that. The side skirts, however, didn't come from the factory. But you might notice that they don't go all the way to the front. And that's because these cars have lights under here, which are the puddle lights. But they do make one that goes all the way to the front that you can still use the puddle light with. I believe those are G80 style because the G80 does have the puddle lights. But the two best aesthetic mods that you can do on this car are a rear diffuser and a spoiler. And the first thing you're probably thinking is wow that spoiler looks ugly i know it's not for everyone let me know if you like it actually in the comments below but for me personally i just wanted a spoiler that not everyone has because i feel like everyone has the same two or three different styles on their car so i just went with something a little bit different which was this vorsteiner style spoiler and yes it is glossy carbon fiber but what's not carbon fiber is my rear diffuser and like i said that's because the front lip breaks all the time and since the front lip breaks all the time i wanted my front lip my side skirts and my rear diffuser to all match i didn't want to have carbon fiber on the sides in the rear and not have carbon fiber in the front. So I just went with black plastic all around and it looks absolutely amazing to me. I mean, just take a look at that diffuser. You might not be able to see because it's a little bit dark back here. There you go. But this thing really completed the rear end look of this car. And before I had this diffuser, I had a different one that just did the rear. This one also comes down and under the exhaust tips and goes all the way around the side. And I think that one by far really completes the rear end look of this car. And if you're wondering where I got all these from, I got them from eBay. And the reason I got them from eBay is because like I said, since my front lip is always getting destroyed on different driveways. I wanted somewhere that I can get them for cheap and I can easily replace them. Because after two years, I'm on my fifth or maybe even sixth front lip. Or actually, this one is my fifth. I should get my sixth one soon because, as you can see, it's pretty banged up and cracked and pretty broken. But those are the first best mods that you can get for your M340i. A lip kit, diffuser, side skirt, and obviously a rear spoiler to complete the rear end look of the car. And even though the one that I have isn't for everyone, there are plenty of options out there on the market. Now for the second and third one, I wanted to talk about them together and that is a set of good wheels and some lowering springs or coilovers. Now another controversial mod that I have on here are these white TE37s and even kind of controversial I have lowering springs, H&R lowering springs to be exact because everyone says that lowering springs won't make the car handle better and I don't think that's completely true. But let's talk about the wheels first. So the M340 comes with a few different sets of wheels. I'll put all of them up on the screen right now and depending on which wheel you have some of them are bigger than others some of them are wider than others but the ones that came on my car are really small they're like seven inches wide whereas this wheel right here is nine and a half in the front and ten and a half in the rear so when you tune and you modify this car you especially have to get wider wheels that are not only lighter but will also accommodate a wider tire in the front and the rear and since this car is x drive or all wheel drive you can actually run a staggered setup on these cars now you can get whatever wheels you want you can get apex wheels you can get t37s like i did you can get Boston, vorsteiner there are so many options on the market for these cars but i definitely think that you should upgrade the wheels on these cars because like i said not every m340 comes with good 
wheels. These are the wheels that I got that came with run flat tires and are seven inches wide. And the ones that are on the screen right now are the good ones that came on this car. And you can actually get Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's on those as well. But since a lot of M340 guys come with run flat tires, aftermarket wheels and tires are by far a super great mod that you should definitely get for this car. Now let's talk about lowering springs versus coilovers. Obviously, if you want your car to handle really, really good and you have a little bit extra money to spend, then definitely 1000% go with something like KW V3 coilovers or whatever your preferred coilover setup is. Whether that be BC Racing, Olin's, KW's, or whatever other coilover you want to run in your car. It will definitely make it handle way, way better than something like just lowering springs or the stock suspension. However, if you do have the adaptive suspension optioned on your car, which disclaimer, I don't have on my car, and you paid for that and you want to retain that feature, then you can go ahead and get lowering springs because it's just going to change the spring to a shorter spring. Your car is going to be lower overall, which means it's going to have a lower center of gravity, and it is going to make it handle slightly better. However, the problem that I ran into because I have H&R lowering springs is that I feel like specifically the H&R springs made this car kind of feel a little bit bouncy when I go over some bumps, especially when I hit potholes. So because of that, I have to recommend the AST lowering springs because I have heard that they are much better. So let's talk about my specific wheel and tire fitment because this is a question that I get asked all the time. How do you get the perfect fitment on these cars? Well, like I said, I have H&R lowering springs. My wheels are Supra Spec TE37 SLs. That is aftermarket Supra Spec, which is 19 by nine and a half in the front, 19 by 10 and a half in the rear. I believe it's a plus 22 offset and a plus 35 in the rear. But if you just go to a Supra aftermarket website like speedindustry.com, I can recommend them definitely. Just look for Supra spec wheels and you should be fine. But like I said, 19 by nine and a half in the front, 19 by 10 and a half in the rear. And my tires, since I am all wheel drive, I have to run a very specific tire setup just so I don't put extra stress on the transfer case, but they are 245, 40 in the front and 275, 35 in the rear. And with Supra spec wheels and those tires and H&R lowering springs, you have barely just a few millimeters of space, especially in the front where it's pretty tight, but that will give you this super meaty looking setup in the front that looks just perfect. There is not even a finger of space and I absolutely have no rubbing by the way. And then in the rear, it even looks pretty good. I have maybe a finger of space in the rear, but it just looks so good with this setup. So let's talk about the last two, which are both performance based. And number four is a flex fuel kit. Now everyone wants to run ethanol in these cars because like I mentioned earlier, you can get 450 wheel horsepower with just a downpipe and a tune. But if you want to hit that magical number of 500, you've got to run E85 or ethanol. And like I mentioned in some of my videos before, if you're a subscriber of the channel, first of all, thank you so much for coming back. But second of all, these cars can't run full E85 without port injection, some extra injectors, and a low pressure fuel pump. But with something like a flex fuel kit, you can run E50 in this car, which will instantly give you an extra boost of 50 horsepower to the wheel. Now I've got the flex fuel kit from Visconti Tuning, who is my tuner, by the way. And that flex fuel kit is my favorite on the market, but there's also other ones from, I believe, Fuel It is the company. And there are really tons of options for these cars. But what the flex fuel kit does is that it makes sure that you don't get misfires when you're running ethanol in the car. Because if you're running your car on 93 and you fill it up with a little bit of ethanol, it's not going to be perfect E50 unless you calculate the blend. But the flex fuel kit has an ethanol sensor inside of it that tells the car how much ethanol is in the car. So it adjusts the tune according to whatever ethanol content you have in the car. It's just so much easier and it prevents misfires and it makes it way, way safer to run E85 or ethanol in the car. And especially if this is your first rodeo modifying or tuning a car like this, you don't want to add too much or not enough ethanol in the car. So go ahead and pick up a flex fuel kit for yourself because it's going to make your life so much easier at the gas pump because you don't have to pull out the thing and pour the gas in the cup and do the whole chemistry lab assignment at the gas pump just to find out how much ethanol you should put in the car because no, ethanol from the gas pump is not 100% E85. Sometimes it's E70, sometimes it's E65. And it also changes depending on the season. In the winter, they have different blends than they do in the summer. So just pick up a flex fuel kit because it won't only make your life so much easier, but it will also give you 50 wheel horsepower, which trust me is a pretty big deal. And the very last thing is actually an XHP flash tune. It's not this, I don't know why I have this in my hand, but it's an XHP flash tune for your transmission. Now I'm kind of surprised as to how many people don't know about this because at least in the B58 community, it is a huge, huge thing because these M performance cars, unlike the M cars, we don't have the adjustable buttons on the transmission shift knob. I mean, the 2023 plus M340 doesn't even have a shift knob, but if we wanted to make our transmission shift smoother or more aggressively, there's nothing that we can do to adjust it unless you get an XHP flash tune. Now, most people obviously tune it to make it way more aggressive. And that's kind of what I have here. I have a stage one 
XHP flash tune. And if you want to learn more about XHP flash tunes for this car specifically, you can watch my video on how to turn your M340i into a supercar killer. Because in that video, I spoke about the three stages of XHP tuning. And in a nutshell, I said that I had stage one because I heard that stage two doesn't really do anything. And stage three might be a little bit too aggressive for this car if you're constantly launching the car, that is. But if you're just driving it regular and you're taking care of it, you should be fine. However, if you're doing a lot of dig racing and you're launching it repeatedly, you can possibly damage the drive shaft or even the axles because we don't have M car axles. We have M performance axles, which are just regular ones. But getting a transmission flash for this car will transform it. It will make it not only shift way faster, but it will bring up your zero to 60 time and your 60 to 130 time. And for those who don't know about 60 to 130 times, that's kind of what people go off of if you're doing roll racing. But a good 60 to 130 time is kind of the benchmark for what makes a car fast nowadays. But getting an XHP flash tune will bring up those 60 to 130 times and make this car really shift like a real M car should. Even though it's not a real M car, of course, but the transmission flash tune will really transform the car. And I recommend it highly to anyone who really wants to get the most out of their M340i or any BMW or even a 90 Toyota Supra. So those were the top five mods. But like I said, I'm going to give you three bonus ones for staying and watching this long, but they're going to be rapid fire. So let's get going with the first one, which is actually brake pads. And here's why. So when you modify this car, you have 500 horsepower, but the brakes are only rated for that stock 382 horsepower. And I obviously don't have the upgraded braking package, but also another major problem on this car is brake dust. If you own any BMW that's semi-modern, you know that the crazy amount of brake dust that you have on these cars is so bad that with white wheels like mine, they would literally look gunmetal gray or black if I didn't have aftermarket brake pads. But look at how small and puny these brakes are in the rear. These I think are a one piston, which is crazy for a 500 horsepower car. And then I believe they're four piston in the front, but for better braking and more importantly, to get that brake dust off of the car, you've got to get something like a ceramic brake pad. Just do your research. I believe EBC makes some really good ones for these cars. I personally have power stop brake pads. I don't think they're semi-metallic, but I think they're like carbon ceramics, something like that. Not carbon ceramic brakes, but just the brake pad itself. And it helps the car stop way better than it would without these. I seriously think that no matter what you do to this car, aftermarket brake pads are a must just to get rid of the horrible brake dust issue that these cars have. Now, the second bonus mod are these plastic mud flaps that honestly aren't really that noticeable. A lot of people think that this looks OEM. When I tell them that I have mud flaps, they're like, what do you drive, a Subaru WRX? But they just don't get it. If you want to protect the way that your paint looks over here and right over here in front of the wheel and right over here where the fender is and right over here where the fender is, then you have to get these little plastic mud flaps because honestly, they look like they're OEM. They don't look like they're not supposed to be on the car. And these specifically are made by Tommy El Garage, who is another BMW YouTuber, actually. He doesn't only do BMW videos, but he used to have an F80 M3 and he also has an F90 M5 right now. But I believe they do sell them on keysmotorsports.com. But definitely get them because by far these mud flaps, if I didn't have them, my paint would be so messed up. And I think honestly on most of the cars that I'm gonna get in the future, mud flaps or something like this to protect the paint is really gonna be at the top of the list of mods that I get first. And for the last bonus mod, it's something that honestly, I don't even really know that much about, but I'm gonna throw it in here because so many people tell me to get it. And so many people tell me that on the Gen 1 340s that they were super popular, but that is a sway bar. Now, I remember earlier when I was talking to you about coilovers versus lowering springs, but a few weeks ago, I did a video on this car where I took it on a point of view drive in the mountains. And a lot of people were telling me that a sway bar will help the body roll of this car and help it handle way better. And especially if you get coilovers and a sway bar, I mean, this thing will practically handle like an M3. So if you buy this car expecting it to handle a lot better than it does, and you realize, wow, this handling actually sucks because that's what I realized if I'm being honest, then get some coilovers and a sway bar because it's going to make it handle so much better and get rid of pretty much all the body roll that this thing has. But at the end of the day, this is really a straight line speed car. So, I mean, I'm not really complaining too much, but if I did want it to handle a lot better then I would get a sway bar and I'd also get coilover. All right. So now that we spoke about all the amazing mods you can get on this BMW M340i, comment down below and let me know which one was your favorite. But before you do that, make sure you hit that subscribe button for some of the best car content that there is on YouTube. Because even though the winter is coming up, I will be out here every single week making videos for you guys on this M340i or on any other car content that you guys would like to see. So make sure you hit that subscribe button because as always, my name is Ryan from Gears and Gains and I will see you in the next one.